So most of you have seen the whole Elizabeth Warren drinking a beer on Instagram Live thing, and if you haven't, let me play just like a little bit of it for you to see. Hold on a sec. I'm gonna get me um, a beer. Hey, Glover, my husband Bruce okay. is now in here. Um, you want a beer? No, I'll pass on the beer for now. You sure? Okay, okay. say hello to folks. Yes. So, hey. this is my sweetie. Hello. Um, he's, and oh, I'm crazy. You I love you. I love you too. Hey. Thank you for being here. Pleasure. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Enjoy your beer. And yeah. She came across cringy and all that, but the point is, there is something going on in the Democratic Party. It seems that the left are trying to build e-girls and e-boys, e-celebs. If you don't know what an e-celeb is, it is someone who has gained popularity and a fan base through the means of Twitch, YouTube, or some other social media, according to Urban Dictionary. An e-girl is a girl on the internet hungry for attention and rely on social media. An e-boy is the same thing, but male. Usually they are hungry for the attention of the opposite sex, but in this political sense, they are hungry for voter base, using social media for attention at any cost. Live streaming their life so that their intimate routines are publicized. They are trying to pander to the youth, and I'm not sure if this is a response to how much the youth is reportedly more right-wing than ever, and how Trump was elected through online means while the left tried their same old method of Hollywood, or I don't know, maybe they're onto something that the mainstream right uh, political spheres have not caught up with yet. Take, for example, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She is known for her Instagram live stories, and Slate even says that it's the future of candidate marketing. Over the past couple of weeks, Ocasio-Cortez has used Instagram to solidify her image as an authentic representative of the working class and an energetic outsider ready to air out DC's musty corridors of power. Speaking directly to constituents and fans on their phones, Ocasio-Cortez has invited her 820,000 followers to follow her to places other legislators keep private into her kitchen, onto her train cars, and behind the security checkpoints of the federal buildings she'll soon inhabit. And it seems to be working. She's the e-girl candidate the Democrats are pumping out. And people are eating it up. I mean, it worked. It got her elected. In Elizabeth Warren's case, it seems inauthentic and forced, but hey, she tried. This is what the Democrats are trying now. And it's not really that new. Obama had the youth. Bill Clinton was the hip young presidential candidate admitting to puffing on marijuana, but not inhaling, and playing the sax on MTV. Now MTV will not do the trick. Celebrity endorsements will not do the trick. And they've caught on to social media with the whole e-celeb thing. Ocasio-Cortez will live stream like every other e-girl. And when she's in a meeting, she doesn't use typical political captions. She captions it with squad and tags her fellow Democrats on Instagram. She hasn't even been sworn in yet. And she's already attained the kind of normal person likability that most politicians can never hope to achieve. It's called pulling a Beto. Democratic consultant Scott Fearson chuckled, referring to up-and-coming progressive Beto O'Rourke, a possible 2020 rival of Warren. Beto has been sold as the cool, hip candidate, and the GOP isn't aware that they are doing this on purpose. The GOP tweeted about his punk rock days, and everyone seemed to love it, not hate it. Even Ocasio-Cortez chimed in, calling the GOP corny. And it's kind of scary. Texas is supposed to be a right-wing state, but Beto gave Cruz a run for his money, and it was just too close for comfort. I think we shouldn't play the left's game of pulling up irrelevant past tweets or photos or experience unless it directly relates to policy and politics, like how Bill Clinton and Chuck Schumer were once against illegal immigration and worked to end it. But now everyone's claiming if you're against immigration, illegal immigration, that it's racist. Or how Hillary Clinton's health care plans failed and how she mishandled Benghazi. I mean, these are relevant topics that you should bring up. Trying to bring up someone's punk rock youth phase, I think, is not the direction to go. Let the left try to bring up something irrelevant from the past, like the Trump tapes, and watch it backfire. It's important to notice what the left are doing. They adapt real quick. 
They evolve at an extremely fast rate. They are trying to learn from their PR mistakes of the 2016 election and the direction they are going is e-celebs. So what can we do about it? How do we not let the right-wing youth slip through our fingers? Generation Z is the most right-wing generation in ages. How do we prevent the left from stealing them? If you want to see more from me and the rest of the Rebel team, like and subscribe.